fellow immersion seekers and welcome to episode 7 of Project Immersion TV. In this episode I'm going to review the Next Level Traction Plush in conjunction with the Motion V3 and GT Track Rig for race and flight simming. It's been a while and I was hoping to get this out about a year or so ago but due to all sorts of shenanigans going on in real life it took a bit of a back seat. Whilst I've predominantly been sim racing for the past 18 years or so I've time from time dipped in and out of flight sims. And as VR has advanced, I've found myself more and more immersed in this quite relaxing but time-hungry pastime. What I had not realised previously was how immersive it can be with 4 degrees of freedom, motion rig and VR. Quite impressive. i found myself flying more than driving since around March this year and getting more and more hours in the cockpit of various planes to the extent I'm now flying almost every evening. So although this review is long overdue, it's not going to be based on first impressions but on over 18 months of use, well, nine months or so of racing and nine months or so of flying with this brilliantly thought out Next Level Traction Plus system. I focused on the Motion V3 and GT track in previous episodes, so go watch those if you're interested in hearing about those, as I'll put my energy into trying to describe the difference the Traction Plus adds to the immersive experience when racing and flying. I received the unit in July 2020 and managed to get three very heavy boxes upstairs with the help of a sack truck by myself. This approach I do not recommend to anybody else. In fact, I'm convinced that installing a lift in my house would have been less effort. Get help to move this magnificently heavy unit and unless you have a forklift truck to hand, you'll need to move each box off the pallet they come on as a two-man operation. Trust me, I'm, it took me days to recover. Aside from the sheer weight and cumbersome ham-fisted efforts involved to move the three components into the right space, adding the Traction Plus to my GT Track and Motion V3 was fairly straightforward. I had to remove the seat and then the Motion V3 unit to make it possible, not only to fit to the Traction Plus once assembled, but to move it around and mount on top as neither are lightweight on their own. Quality uses from every part of the Traction Plus and the weight adds to the feeling for sure. It's very well made and the parts fit together like hands in gloves. Every year Next Level seems to increase their production quality over and over again. And I've got my eye on the FGT Elite released a few months ago. But honestly, I'm happy as Larry with the GT track. It's just so solid. Oh no, <laughs> the unit did not light up properly out of the box. But it was early days and true to form the guys at Next Level Support sorted out in no time with remotely guided flash of the BIOS on the main unit itself and voila, it sprang into life, lit up and self-calibrated. Thanks, Matthew. It's not as silent as the Motion V3 when calibrating and does this at every power run, but my wife has hardly complained. Hardly complained at all, in fact, in 18 months or so. My man cave is above her craft room, so she does tend to hear when I'm engaged in my hobby more than before. But post-calibration, unless you are, heaven forbid, slamming into a wall sideways or plunging into a spin into the ground, it's very quiet. The loudest part being the controller in the middle section as cooling is afforded to the powerhouse controllers by their integrated fans. As an aside, but to note importantly, I had to make alterations to the next level standalone single monitor stand I have my TV mounted to in order to accommodate the extra width of the Traction Plus platform. This I achieved with some 40mm steel box section painted black cut to the desired width which I bought online, tailor made. It's almost a moot point though, so I just don't use the TV with the rig other than to launch the sim since VR. I could do away with it if that's all I used it for, but I also use it for watching films and playing a nice relaxing round of virtual golf on a Friday evening with some good friends, with lashings and lashings of nice drinks to see the working week out. Right, let's get on with this long overdue report and the review of the Traction Plus in conjunction with the Motion V3 on my GT <sighs> track rig, flipping egg. Cut. Hello? Who's this? Oh, wait up, Bono. Long time no speak. How's things? Hold on, slow down. You're speaking too fast. Lots of background noise, mate. Can hardly hear you. Oh, you're at Silverstone. Nice. Okay, so one of your test drivers has come down with something. Phoned in sick. Yeah, got that. And he'll be out for a while. No need to shout. Yeah, no, st no, no, start shouting again, I can't hear you. Yeah, and you need to test the car to gather telemetry, okay. Yeah, yeah, I'd be up for that, yeah. Let me look at my diary, hold on, it's on the phone. Sorry? Today? Crikey. What time do you need me there? 
two hours at Silverstone. <laughs> That's a push. I'll die. I'll make that in time. Hang on. You're sending Nottingham Bob to the usual place. Pick me up. Okay. I hope he's in something fast. See even if. Yeah. Hang on. Let's get a move on. Should be around here somewhere. There he is. Definitely looks like Bob. Hey, Bob. Let me in. <sighs> How you doing, Bob? Thanks for uh, thanks for bringing the chopper. Um, can we go to his? Oh, you want me to fly? Okay. No, you're asking. It's been a while. I guess you just flew here. So, uh, good journey. How did the tongue operation go? Let's uh, let's get there. So uh, yeah, this is not going to be fast enough. So we'll go to East Midlands and uh, hop on a a plane if that's all right with you. It'll be a bit quicker to get down to Silverstone. I think if we go in this, it uh, it could take a significant amount of time. Bit of 
pace on. I've kind of got to get there in the. Well, it was two hours. It's probably an hour and uh, hour and three quarters now. But, uh, I should have gone to the loo before the left. Uh, I knew there was something. I came straight. I just went straight out the door, really, after the phone call. Anyway, the good thing about the next level motion system, uh, it's actually made by Motion Systems EU. We make all sorts of motion systems, look them up. Um, but they also make software called Platform Manager. I mentioned this before in my reviews on uh, the V3 and the V2 for that matter. And it really is quite quite clever and it's constantly under development and they're constantly doing updates, new firmwares and all that kind of thing. Um, and it provides tactile feedback through um, through the chair, but also feeds into your butt kicker if you have one I've got one attached at the back and so I'm getting the tactile feedback from the engine revs through butt kicker so that's a nice little vibration depending on the type of aircraft I'm flying um, it controls both the traction plus and of course uh, the, the motion V3 um, so it, it's all in one package. You don't need you know, any extra control for, for your um, tactile feedback. And it, it not only can control one butt kicker, but it can control multiple. Another four or even six, depending on how many channels you've got, you can feed into it. Um, or it can push uh, data out from. And you can, you know, set different parts of the chassis, different parts of the engine, the RPM, the gear changes in, in cars and things like that, to different shakers. So I've just got the one book kicker and I'm using the chair for the majority of the uh, tactile feedback such as turbulence and stuff like that. Um, so it doesn't really feed into um, the major movements, it's the subtle movements. In a helicopter you've got a lot of subtle movements. Uh, in fact, every movement should be a subtle movement really in a helicopter, so you know, spin out of control. I, mean, I don't know if you can hear that, but basically as I'm doing that I'm getting vibrations as it's chopping through the air. Um, the rudder obviously will control the yaw. Um, and the rotation <laughs> of the actual helicopter, um, but it, that's most, some of that's a combination of the V3 and you know the added extras of the sway and uh, and the yaw from from the uh, traction plus part of the motion system. It really is quite nice. I mean, in a car, you've got the loss of back ends, which I'll show you uh, when we get to Silverstone, I guess. Um, but in, in, in a helicopter, it's all subtle movements. So I'm leaning over, and the chair's tipping over. I'm getting lots of little vibrations as, a, as the air works with the helicopter and feels the turbulence cutting through the air. Um, it makes it feel very, very real. Now, I have been up in a helicopter, not in the front, but in the back. And, yeah, I do remember feeling uh, very much connected with the environment. Or well, the atmosphere was probably more appropriate. Um, we're coming up to East Midlands now, which is, which is great. Um, it's a lot. Of, seems to be a lot of extra wind turbines for some reason. Um, a bit close to an airport, don't think that's right. So it's quite a hazy morning, as you can see. Um, got a little bit of low cloud, um, but that's quite common in these parts. I'm sure anybody that lives in Derbyshire can tell you. So, uh, so yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm going to actually. I, I need the bathroom, so I'm going to park over by uh, by the engineers' workshops. And, uh, 
quite lovely. Over, just over there, there's a little air, air, air museum. Uh, I visited there uh, last year, actually. Um, yeah, it's got some interesting... Uh, I shouldn't really have come in over a runway like that. Air traffic control here, yeah. having fits. So, yeah, I know there's a loo just down here, so I'm going to head for that. Just down by one of those little coffee shops. So, uh, and then, Bob, while I'm in the bathroom, I'm struggling to get this down, while I'm in the bathroom, could you be so kind as to try and commandeer a... Uh, a little plane that will do twice the speed of this to get us down the down there a bit quicker, if that's uh, possible, sir. Much appreciated. found. Oh! The uh, helicopter's gone. That's a bit odd. Well, he's just texted me and said uh, meet me round the corner from where we were so I'm assuming that's, hmm, it's not there. Okay, maybe he's in one of these buildings. Mm, running now. Oh. I can hear something, but I, I thought it was machine. Uh, that is machinery. Oh my goodness, look at that. Okay, it's Bob. Hey Bob, can you uh, let me in, mate? Yeah, do you want to swap? Okay. So we've swapped. Put that down. Let me help it on. That's it. Right. So uh, he said these are a piece of cake to fly and fairly intuitive. So uh, so let's go. Ooh. Okay. Uh, we probably do need. A map of how to get where we're going. So let's pull up the VFR map. I must remember to click back in the cockpit. It seems to be the only way it works at the moment after this hot fix. If anyone knows any different, let me know. And yeah, clicking anywhere in the cockpit allows you to get back to your controls. Oh, what have we got on? Parking brake. Right, parking brake off. Okay. That's it, just checking the wind. Okay. I'm not going to ask for permission to take off here. Um, just as we didn't ask for permission to land. Because I think we'll get told no. And I've got to get to Silverstone. And the beauty about having one of these jets is that I can go directly to Silverstone because it's a very, very short runway, and I mean short, that we can uh, that we can land on. So, yeah, it's uh, almost like it. Bob's actually thought this out. So otherwise, we'd have had to go to Luton and uh, jumped in another chopper, I guess. But, uh, well, thanks, Bob. Oh, he's gone. Okay. So, without further ado, and before I get anything else landing here, yeah, let's get on our merry way to. Uh 
Will I survive the takeoff? Will I make it to Silverstone in time for testing? Find out, part two.